As we saw in my previous video, the Bird 43 is a rugged and reliable RF power meter. It reads average power, so for a mode such as FM, where you've got a constant carrier, it will reliably read the peak output from the radio. However, if we switch to something like single sideband, where there is no carrier, the meter, because it only reads average power, will not respond to the voice peaks. Now Bird does sell a peak reading version of the 43 called the 43P and also sells a kit that you can install in an existing 43 to turn it into a peak reading kit. And there's other folks that make uh, peak reading kits as well. In today's video, I'm going to be installing this peak reading kit from LNA Technology. It's called the PR90. I picked this one up from NM3E in Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a little less expensive than the kit that's offered by Bird. It also has the ability to uh, fine-tune and adjust the zero reading and also fine-tune and adjust the uh, full-scale calibration for peak reading. It also gives you an adjustment for the time constant for the peak hold so you can determine for yourself how long you want the peaks to be held so you can accurately read the peak envelope power of your transmitter. Now, The first thing you want to do is ensure that the meter movement itself is properly adjusted to zero. And you do that with the adjustment right here on the meter face. In my case, this one is pretty well spot on, so I don't need to touch that adjustment. Now the next step is to remove the back of the meter, which is simply done by removing the four screws at the corners and the back lifts out. With the four screws removed, the back easily lifts out of the case. We can now see the back of the line section, the sampling port connection to the meter. The next step is to remove the two wires from the back of the meter. These are 5 16 inch uh, nuts on the back here. It's a good idea to use a socket or nut driver or a wrench as opposed to a pair of pliers to avoid damaging the nuts. To install this kit you want to remove uh, the nuts and all of the washers associated with those connections. Now on some meters there may be a second set of nuts located below where the coaxial connections were made. You'll want to remove those as well to ensure that the board sits deep enough in the case for the little wings on the board to fit properly in the holes on either side of the case. Now because this board has got a couple of wings, one with the power switch that extends out through the element hole on this side and one with an auxiliary power jack that extends through the hole on this side, you may choose to dress the coaxial uh, interconnection cable around the meter body before installing the board to make for a nice neat installation. So I've coiled my connection down around the, uh, the meter body here and now I'm ready to put the board in for, for real. Rest it over the meter studs and then we'll take a washer and a nut for each stud and then snug them down with the nut driver. I've taken the spare washer and nut and put them on the top of each stud so that they're there in case I ever want to reverse the process I can put everything back where it was. The next step is to simply make the connections from the uh, sensing port to the board. And uh, the original center conductor connection goes to this uh, screw terminal here and the shield connection goes to this terminal here. With those four connections all snugged down, all we need to do now is install the battery and we can go and make our adjustments. This board does have three adjustments available. The zero adjustment is to adjust the pointer to zero when there's no input power. The cal adjustment adjusts the uh, accuracy, typically done at full scale. And then there's a peak hold adjustment to adjust the time constant. These boards do come pre-adjusted, so we probably won't have to touch any of these, but let's just make a couple of quick measurements to be sure. At the first is the zero adjustment with no power going through the device. Uh, we've already set the mechanical adjustment to the meter to zero. If I turn the circuit on, there's essentially no movement in that needle, so there's really no need to touch the zero adjustment. So we'll check the calibration first with the meter out of circuit. Just verify that we've got an exact uh, full scale reading here. And now we'll uh, push the peak reading in and measure the same thing. And we can see we're just ever so slightly high, so we'll have to make an adjustment to uh, the cal pot. Okay, with the peak reading circuit in line, we'll key up that same full scale carrier and just make a slight adjustment to the pot to get us our full scale reading that matches the 
average reading. And so finally we'll just check the operation of the, the peak reading function to see if the time constant is to our liking. Switch the rig to single sideband mode. And with the circuit off, uh, we can kind of see what we were observing before, is that we're not reaching uh, the full peak as indicated on the, uh, the meter on the radio. So let's switch, switch the circuit in line. And now uh, we can actually see we're getting our, our peak response. It's going right up to that same full, uh, full scale 10 watts. And we can see the time constant uh, in between my words. So I don't think I need to adjust it. I think I like that response. It's giving me the ability to easily see the, uh, the peak output power and uh, also not taking too long to, uh, to drop down. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video showing uh, how easy it is to install a peak reading kit into a Bird 43 watt meter. Uh, I'm real happy with the way this worked out. A very simple installation, uh, just uses a single 9 volt battery. Uh, the, really the only downside is that you can no longer use the, uh, the little holes on either side of the meter to store extra elements uh, because the power switch for the peak reading kit uh, protrudes through one side and the auxiliary DC jack to run off of external power protrudes through the other. But other than that, uh, I think this was a, uh, a nice success and a real nice addition to a, a fine RF watt meter. Thanks again for watching. If you like what you see, please uh, subscribe and give me a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Thank you.